Good evening, everybody. This is Brian. I uh, wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. This is just kind of a status of, you know, what's Brian been doing and just kind of checking in. Um, it's Thanksgiving, so this is the season to be thankful for things. Um, my sense of humor is still pretty dark and twisted. There's Big Bird. <laughs> also, um, today is a hallmark. Uh, Drew Hookway, one of our administrators, just welcomed our 1,000th member into the Void Rums Facebook group. I'm just amazed at how this group has grown. We've got 1,000 programmers in there. Um, that's just insane. This whole thing started as just me making videos for my daughter, and I thought it'd be like me and maybe like two other dudes halfway across the planet talking about programming. But, wow, no, it's actually kind of grown. So, um, I haven't made a lot of videos because I've been really working on the C10K problem. My phone's blowing up. Who's messaging me? Uh, the C10K problem, if you don't know what it is, it's uh, computers have come a long way, right? Um, back in the day, when you had 1,000 megahertz machines with 2 gigs of RAM, these were like, you know, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. And they couldn't really handle a whole lot. But technology's changed, computers have changed. So I'm really interested in socket programming. I always have been. So when I get kind of down in a rut and I get sick of all my side projects, because I usually have too many projects going on, um, I always kind of come back to this. And I haven't been making videos because I've been working on this. So um, I've showed this showed I've shown this code before. It's a little structured different, a diff, little differently. Ah, forgive me. I have got turkey belly going on. I'm waiting for my stomach to just burst. I ate like an obscene amount of food today. Um, so in short, I, I'm trying to figure out a good project structure here. So I've got just TCP server and this is all run off the Qthread pool. So you've got the server with runnable and then the connections. Um, so the server, obviously, the incoming connections come into the server. The runnable spins up the connections. The connection is just a wrapper class that wraps the socket functions. Pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. And then through inheritance, I just did a pretty very basic HTTP server. So you've got the server and the connection. Notice how we're not inheriting the runnable. There's really no need to. It just kind of works in the background. So the server itself is very simple. It just inherits the TCP server and then overloads the, is that right? Overloads, overrides. My brain's just fried. Like I said, I ate too much food. It's been a long week. Um, overload the accept function. Um, the accept, you just have a handle, which is the socket descriptor, and then the runnable. The connection itself is just, you know, the TCP connection. So let's flip in here, switch header and source. And you can see what's going on in the accept is we're just saying, you know, a couple of bugs, and then we're saying a new connection equals, you know, new connection. And then if you can't create a connection, do something. And then we're just going to make connecting. And what that does is that connects everything together. Um, the super short of it is, let's run this. Um, it can run in single mode, pooled mode, or threaded mode. And I've shown this in other videos where single, all connections one run on one thread. Um, it's not entirely accurate. It's one runnable. That runnable represents one thread. Um, then pooled, you have a bunch of pooled connections that run in the thread pool. Or threaded, meaning every connection gets its own unique thread. Um, it's also kind of not true. Every connection gets its own runnable. It'll, Qthread pool does things in the background that just boggles my mind. So um, I'm just going to run a test here. We're going to run it in pooled because why not? Um, and we're going to actually say this can handle 20,000 connections. Just an absurd amount of connections that we'll never, ever really need. Um, we have an idle timeout. This is new from the last video. Uh, because sometimes when I test the sockets, we'll get stuck in a connected state, even though Siege, the program I'm using to test, is already closed. So it's just going to idly, or idly, it's going to check those sockets for idle timeout. And we are now running that. Let me pop open a few things here. Um, should note, um, to do this, you have to change your uh, your upper file limit. So if we go ulimit, uh, what is it, uh, soft number? You can see that I put 65,000 for my soft number, and I think the hard number is probably also 65,000. Um, if you don't do that, this will crap out on you around 1,000 to 2,000 connections. I actually think it's like 1,200 or something, because you have what's called a file limit, a soft limit. So you want to definitely make sure you can 
increase that and a quick Google will show you how to do that. Um, I actually think it's in cat Etsy security. Gosh, I'm going off memory here and I'm getting old. I've eaten a lot of food. Security limits dot config. Yeah, there it is. And I just at the very end of the file, you just put in the the hard and soft limits and then you log out, log back in and then boom, you've got your limits. So that's kind of where we are here. Anyways, enough of that. We're going to load up Siege. Um, the problem with the testing this is it's very difficult to actually test. Um, we're going to do 10,000 connections in Siege and see what happens. And as this thing is just churning away, we're going to go, I'm still not used to Mint here. I'm used to typing everything in, so menus kind of mess me up. And here's our system monitor. Once the metrics start loading, you'll see um, Q thread pool. This is why you use Q thread pool. It's balancing across multiple CPUs. Um, your memory and swap is fine. Now we're handling, you know, 10,000 incoming connections. Um, not entirely true because of the way Siege works internally. And you can see, all right, we're getting some warnings in Siege here. We're getting some alert timeouts and things like that. So we're going to go ahead and stop Siege. And we had 3,400 or 3,048 failed connections, which is weird. You can see I have some idle sockets because there's some cleanup that Siege didn't properly handle, and it's going ahead and clearing those out. Um, not sure entirely if it's Siege, because as you can see, Siege just stopped, or if it's the operating system that's having a problem. And you can see the CPU usage and memory scaling down as there's no more connections going in there. Concurrency, um, concurrency is a approximate number is an average so on average we handled about 3,183 connections simultaneously across uh, 42,000 hits so the program is actually getting better we're not at the 10k yet and I'm not sure if it's a limitation with my software the operating system or siege the program I'm using to test so I may have to write an entire test suite just so I see what's going on under the hood um, the failed transactions, that's interesting to me because my program didn't have any errors. There's zero error handling in here, and I didn't see any errors, but it was also whipping by really fast. I did notice in testing, the siege has a hard limit. Boom. 15,000 connections, and it says unable to allocate memory for 15,000 simultaneous browsers. That's interesting because I have 32 gigs of RAM, um, so there's probably some tweaks that I need to do within the operating system because this isn't a server-based operating system, but desktop-based, etc., etc. So this is really what's been occupying a lot of my time, which is really pathetic when you think about it. But um, So let's just do whoops, 5,000 connections and see what happens here. And notice how I didn't stop and restart the server like you'll see uh, some other folks do in their videos. Um, I'm just making sure all the memory handling is done correctly. Um, we can see our system resources have spun up as soon as we did this. We're actually maxing out a couple of those CPUs. And you'll see how it kind of balances the CPUs out. That's really what uh, QThreadPool is doing under the hood for us. And our network usage spiked up as well. And we're starting to get some errors here. Alert timeout sockets. Just going to let this churn away and churn away and churn away. And let's go ahead and Yep, it looks like it's starting to die. When I say it's starting to die, I'm not sure if this is Siege or something else. So if you guys know of a better uh, web server testing tool than Siege to keep me from writing one, yeah, I think Siege is dying. Um, let's go ahead and stop Siege. Yeah, see, this time it only handled 1,900 simultaneous connections. Um, we had 1,300 failed transactions. So I'm really looking for, at this point, just a better testing suite, because if I do just a 1,000 connections, you can see it goes much smoother, much better in Siege. Uh, my program's just churning away. I'll go ahead and stop it. Zero failed transaction. It handled 400 connections simultaneously. So that's kind of the crux of what I've been working on. I've been getting a lot of emails saying, what are you doing? Why aren't you making videos? Well, that's why. Uh, Went through a breakup, had to move, um, been spending a lot of time with my kid, and I think that's actually her messaging me right now. Nope, it's not her. Um, she's supposed to come over in a few minutes. Um, and just hanging out with friends and living life. But I wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, 
if you haven't already, join the Void Rooms Facebook group. I really look forward to seeing this grow. Uh, it's an amazing resource. I ask questions in there all the time, and people jump in and answer. Um, and sometimes people get frustrated because they'll ask a question and no one will answer them. Um, I would just say, if that's happening, don't get frustrated. Just you know, ask the question again. Maybe word it a little different. Maybe people don't understand the problem, or they're looking at you going, "Have you have you heard about Google? Google's an awesome resource." But anyways. That's it. I'm babbling. I've got food coma going on. I'll talk to you guys later.